sectoral plays there. The sectoral plays there. Okay, we have a very special guest joining us from Singapore. There's Jim Rogers, uh, investing legend who needs no re uh, uh, introduction really, is uh, known for the 4,200% return that Quantum Fund made uh, in a, a decade as well. Jim, great to have you with us on NDTV Profit. Let me start with uh, your picture of the world as you see it, particularly the U.S. markets where you've been uh, very vociferously against the policies followed by the Fed. You know, how bad is it looking? Well, Namrata, it's nice to see you again. Uh, the U.S. is in serious trouble. The people in Washington do not have a clue what's going on. For two years, this has been brewing, and for two years, they've been making mistakes. So the U.S. is going to have its worst uh, economic time probably since the 1930s. So it doesn't get any better in, you know, the second half of 2009 or 2010, Jim. That's the consensus on the street. It's going to get worse, but everybody believes that there will be a recovery in 2010. Now, Murata, if everybody believes it's going to be better in the second half of 2009, I promise you it's not going to be, and it probably is not going to be in 2010, especially if that's the consensus. All of these people who are in the consensus told us a year ago everything would be fine. They told us six months ago everything would be fine in, in the first part of 2009. The consensus has been totally dead wrong about this Namrata, and they continue to be dead wrong. Jim, hi, good morning. Uh, Prashant also joining in. Uh, how would uh, asset classes like equities perform in the meanwhile? Uh, because, uh, you know, markets like India have already taken large cuts, uh, although they're uh, you know, they're relatively uh, better off in terms of uh, the economic environment panning out compared to something like a U.S. Uh, equity is your call for 2009? Well, Prashant, I, I have sold all of my stocks everywhere in the world except some in China. I bought some more in China in October, November, but I'm not buying shares anywhere in the world. This is, <laughs> these are economic hard times, Prashant. People need to understand that, the very fact that people constantly say to me, aren't you buying? What should you buy? Let's me know that people just do not quite yet understand what is happening in the world in 2009. Commodities, uh, Jim, uh, that's been a space that you've uh, liked relatively even uh, towards the end of 2008. Uh, uh, prices have corrected across the board quite a bit. Uh, what's your call there? Well, Prashant, the only sector that I know where the fundamentals are improving are commodities. Many farmers in the world cannot get loans for fertilizers now. And the f inventories of food are the lowest in 50 years. Nobody can get a loan to open a mine. Oil reserves are declining around the world at a fairly rapid rate. The fundamentals, because of the supply for commodities, is the only thing I know that's getting better. If you need to own something, I would suggest you learn about owning commodities and selling stock short. But how do you make that decision, Jim? Because you earlier explained the fact that, you know, commodities work on very long, much longer cycles than equities do. And within the cycles, there can be short-term corrections where they could even correct by 50% plus, as we've seen over the last year and this year. So how do you know when it's a correction, when it's a sustainable long uh, bull run? How do you make that uh, difference? Namrat, if, if you and I knew that, we would be so rich. I, I'm Jim. the world's worst market timer. <laughs> I'm the worst market timer in the world. I'm the worst short-term trader in the world. I just try to be long things that are going to do better than the things that I'm short if there's a collapse and, and vice versa, where the longs will go up more than the shorts if things get better. By the way, the best sector in the world that I know right now, Prashant, to answer your earlier question, is probably agriculture. Everybody should go and become a farmer. Farming is going to be one of the great industries of our time for the next 20 or 30 years. It's been finance and paper shuffling and money. Now it's going to be real assets and real things. I, mean, I know being a farmer in India is a nightmare because of your government, but in many countries, farming is going to be a fantastic industry in the future. So Jim, a lot of these commodities are agricultural commodities that you would go long on, say, you know, cotton or like agricultural commodities at this point? Well, I think agricultural commodities are probably going to do better than others for the moment because many agricultural prices are still very, very low on a historic basis. I mean, sugar is still 80% below its all-time high, just to give you an idea. Cotton is 60% below its all-time high. You know, there are not many things that are 80% that are below where they were 35 years ago. Sugar is one of them.
Jim, you said you're out of most equities except some in China. Uh, just just uh, run us through some of your thoughts, uh, you know, if you, if you could, for 2009 and 2010. How bad or how worse off is it going to get? In U.S., we are starting to hear the N-word once again, nationalization of some of the biggest institutions out there like, uh, like, like Citigroup. It really changes not only the economic environment but the social fabric as well. Prashant, I expect to see social unrest, civil unrest in the United States a couple of years from now. Yes, it's changing the entire situation in the United States. The United States is the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. There is a dramatic sea change taking place. The, the world's center is moving from the west to the east to Asia. And many people have not figured this out yet, especially people in the United States. No, you're going to see a lot of turmoil in the United States in the next uh, three, four or five years. Hmm. How, how does it play out for an investor? You know, what's actionable right now, if something at all, or just sit on cash through all of it? Well, uh, well, what kind of cash, Prashant? If you own Icelandic krona, you've been wiped out. You got to own the right kind of cash. Uh, cash is an alternative for people who who don't want to try to do anything or think it's too perilous. You could learn to sell short. I have, I am short, started shorting stocks again in the United States. I covered in October, November. I thought there would be a big rally, but now it's very clear that these people in Washington have no clue, zero understanding of what's going on. So I've started selling short again in the United States. That's one way to play it, or as, I, as I'm doing it, I'm long commodities and short finance for the most part. You've got out of polio dollars, U.S. dollars, Jim? No, I still own my U.S. dollars. I do plan to get out of my U.S. dollars sometime this year. Uh, I've gotten out of some, but no, I still have my dollars because it seems that the short covering rally, it's an artificial rally, Namrata, that there are people are being forced to cover their shorts in the U.S. dollar, and there are huge short positions. I won't get the timing right, but I'm going to try to get out sometimes this year. Just going back to your opinion on China, Jim, because a lot of people believe that civil unrest or social unrest, which can happen there as well, 20 million migrant workers out of business, unemployed over the last couple of months, and the situation is deepening on the uh, you know, real economy front there. Again, exported linkage with the U.S. compounding fear. So, you know, to your mind, China as the growth engine of the Asian economy, how would you chart it? Well, there's no question there already is social unrest, some social unrest in, in China, and I'm sure you'll see more going forward because these are perilous times economically around the world. Any part of the Chinese economy that deals with the West, especially retail, for instance, knows something's wrong right now. Some parts of the Chinese economy and some parts of the Indian economy are going to do extremely well going forward. But for the most part, you're going to have problems. Now, China has huge reserves. They're the largest creditor nation in the world right now. Will that prevent problems? Of course not. Of course not. They're going to have problems too. But think about where the money is. The largest creditor nations in the world are China, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore. The money is in Asia now. And throughout history, the center of things has moved to where the money is. It's pretty simple stuff. This is not ideological. This is just the way history has always worked. Jim, why don't you like a market like India at a time like this? Uh, some would say, you know, it's done well for itself by not opening too much to, uh, you know, the global markets early on. In hindsight, that's looking like a good decision. Well, except for the fact you say it looks like a good decision in hindsight. I don't think it's a good decision in hindsight. Certainly has prevented anybody from selling to the West and or to their developed world, and therefore they're not suffering so badly right now. But if, if you think that India internally has enough savings and investing to come out of all of this, then some parts of India will do very, very well. I don't, I don't see it that way in India. You have a government that's not terribly pro-business or pro-making money. Uh, they don't particularly like people to make money in India. You're most of the politicians there. I mean, I don't see it. But if, but if you see it that way, Prashant, you should by all means buy, buy Indian shares. But I'm not so much against India right now. I'm not buying shares anywhere. It's nothing to do with India or, or Pakistan or Australia or any place. It's just I don't see good reasons to buy shares anywhere.
But Jim, do you feel, you know, we've got elections impending in May. Do you feel there could be big bang reforms? Because the condition uh, from the global economic environment, uh, environment is so bleak, maybe the next government wants to encourage more investors like yourself to come in and they make those concessions. Namrata, if they do it, I will come and kiss their feet. But I'm telling you, I've been hearing this from Indian politicians for many, many years. I'm, I'm old enough to have heard this before. And by the way, I've heard it from many politicians in many countries. If your politicians really mean it this time, it would be fantastic for the world. It would be fantastic for India. I don't believe them. <laughs> All right, uh, Jim. Uh, pleasure speaking with you uh, and getting your thoughts across here on NDTV. Appreciate your time and hope to see a lot more of you. Uh, good luck with your investments. Uh,